Silver, Skelos. They're not just names that made headlines. They're the disgraced former speaker and majority leader of the Albany State House, a place that U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara calls a cauldron of corruption. Bharara's newest case is equally worthy of that title. Both his office and State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman have unveiled separate criminal charges against top state power brokers and prominent developers, including two former aides to Governor Cuomo and members of his inner circle, Joe Prococo and Todd Howe, all part of a wide-ranging corruption probe of major construction projects upstate. As part of our ongoing series, Corruption Watch, we're taking a look at the specter of corruption that hangs over New York. Here with analysis of the latest Albany scandal is Jennifer Rogers, a former federal prosecutor and executive director of the Center for the Advancement of Public Integrity at Columbia Law School. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, so first, just give us an idea. Who are the players in these cases right now? So uh, as you mentioned, Todd Howe and Joe Prococo are two of the major players, both reputed to be close to the governor. Uh, also, Elaine Colieros is the other major player here. He's the head of SUNY Polytech, which is the uh, mechanism by which millions and millions of dollars is, are being funneled to contractors in the Buffalo Billion uh, Economic Development Program. And since Buffalo Billion seems to be the crux of all of this, how is it that uh, money seems to have been misused with this program? Because it sounds like a great idea on the surface. Well, one of the real problems here is that Polytech, uh, SUNY Polytech is not a state agency and it's not a state authority, which is another kind of state entity. It's effectively a nonprofit that's being used by the state. And as a result, it doesn't have the same protections. The same rules don't apply. So the money that's going through there is not being scrutinized in the same way it would be if a state agency or a state authority were doling out the money. What exactly are the charges that have been brought and exactly who's been charged with what? So as you mentioned, the U.S. attorney has brought charges, uh, Preet Bharara, the U.S. attorney in Manhattan, and also Eric Schneiderman, the attorney general. So in the federal case, the U.S. attorney case, there are basically two schemes that have been charged, and they charge nine different people, including How Colieros and Percoco. Mm -hmm. In the first scheme, Percoco is charged with taking about $315,000 worth of bribes in order to benefit a real estate developer and an energy company. And uh, those folks, executives at those uh, companies are charged as well. And basically what he was doing is putting money in his pocket in exchange for different official <laughs> actions like steering state contracts to them, giving energy credit, that sort of thing. The second scheme charges Colieros uh, and Todd Howe is charged in this scheme as well, although separately because he's a cooperator, right. with basically, as I mentioned, manipulating the RFPs, the requests for uh, bids that come in in order to benefit individual bidder companies who then paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes to Todd Howe. And then for anybody who might be confused, what's the difference between the charges brought by um, the U.S. attorney and the state attorney general? So the federal charges are brought based on the federal statutes, and they are basically bribery charges. They charge theft of honest services, extortion under color of official right, and federal program bribery, but they're all based on bribery, so quid pro quo, this for that. The state charges that uh, Attorney General Schneiderman brought are bid rigging charges. They are anti-competition charges. Mm -hmm. um, some would call them antitrust charges. So they're brought under state statutes, different laws. Uh, and it makes sense that they were brought separately because uh, the federal government, there are criminal antitrust provisions that the antitrust division of DOJ brings, but typically not U.S. attorney's offices. So that's why I think this particular charge was kind of um, siphoned off and, and given to the attorney general. Is this common for um, the state and the federal government to bring these kind of charges simultaneously? And is there inter any interplay between the ones that are current right now? It's not common, um, typically because if you have one factual scenario, you would charge it all in one place. But what appears to have happened here is you have two offices investigating at the same time. They clearly were coordinating. They each thanked each other and, and so on. So they knew it was coming. They, they decided to do it on the same day. But here you have uh, a mechanism by which the state can charge conduct that the feds really can't do very well in this context. So it made sense to split it up, even though Colieros is a defendant in both cases. So that's unusual to have that going on at the same time. I was going to say that seems uh, especially unusual, even for New York State. Um, so with all of that in mind, then, um, what can we expect to happen going forward? So Todd Howe, who's the cooperator, has already pleaded guilty in his individual mm -hmm. case. The rest of those folks were arrested on a complaint, so they haven't been charged by the grand jury yet. The next phase of the case will be 
for the offices to go to their grand juries, present the case, obtain an indictment from the grand jury, then those cases uh, will get a judge assigned to them and then they'll proceed with litigation and eventually setting a trial date. Okay, so it feels like the big money question is, do any of these um, corruption cases, any of these corruption charges, because they all seem to be pins falling down around Governor Cuomo, but nothing seems to touch him, um, does any of this connect to him at all? Well, it's unclear. Um, you know, he hasn't been charged. Um, there's no indication that he's involved in this conduct or even knew about this conduct. Uh, so I would be surprised if we ever see any charges on him. It seems that it's just that the structure that was set up allowed this to happen. And that's really where he needs to step in and make changes so that you don't have this recurring uh, problem of, of bribery and other crimes in the, the economic development system. Um, is there a way that he can then attempt to uh, rebuild his team around him? Because this this has got to leave him incredibly vulnerable. Well, look, it wasn't a good day for him last week, clearly, when these <laughs> no, charges were brought. Percoco was very close to him. But he left the administration before uh, the subpoenas were issued, before any of this was even announced. Um, so he's rebuilt his team. The other thing that he's done that I really like, actually, is he brought in back in May, an independent actor to evaluate the contracting system related to Buffalo Billion and to make recommendations so that we hopefully won't see these kind of vulnerabilities again. So that was an action that I think is positive, and I've kind of been awaiting uh, the report <laughs> by Bart Schwartz, who's yeah. the person he brought in, and um, he, I think, will make very good recommendations, and we'll see whether the governor follows them. All right. Well, this seems like uh, something that I think we all would like to have an entire year go by where there's no corruption <laughs> charges coming out of Albany. Um, but you've been following this for several years now, so you would know. We will see. We yeah. will see. There's <laughs> always something to follow, you know, for better and for worse. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some insight and clarity as to these latest corruption charges. Thanks. It's great to be here.